Think about using voltmeters and ammeters. We want to think about other experiences that we might have had reading meters first. So here we have a picture of the speedometer that you might find inside of your parents' car. And as you know uh, from our metric system, miles is not a normal metric unit, but we use miles per hour. And those are going to be shown here. You can see it says white miles per hour. Those are the outer numbers. And then kilometers per hour are indicated on the inside in red. So if the needle um, on this particular speedometer were pointing at roughly the 40, you would see that you were going 40 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour. When we're reading our voltmeter and our ammeter, it's going to be important that we also remember to check which line we're supposed to be reading so that we get the right results and we use the right units. To start, we're going to use the voltmeter. The voltmeter is a good way for us to test and see how much charge is left in our batteries. Um, and it's also a good way to measure the potential difference in a circuit, um, which is the definition of voltage. So the way that we're going to start out is you can see that I've hooked up the battery with my cables already. Um, my black is on the negative node and my red is on the positive node. This is important because the meters are going to be color coded for us to be able to attach them in the right place. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach my negative baseline to here. So that way I can have my closed circuit as soon as I start touching this. So to figure out how many volts are running through this battery, because maybe it's not six volts if it's been worn down, I just touch it to each of these knobs. I'm going to start with this knob that says three volts. We can predict that if this battery had six volts of uh, potential difference, that it would go off the scale. Let's see what happens. And it definitely does. And it definitely does. So um, this would not be the right scale for us to use. We might want to try um, something much larger, like 300 volts. And you can see that on this one, I'd be reading the bottom most line where it ends in 300. It says 300 here and 300 there. But it'd be very hard to read because the needle barely moved. So the ideal scenario um, is going to be for us to try at 15 volts. So do me a quick second, take a look. If I plug it into the 15 volt marker here, on the scale I'm going to look for the one that ends in 15 and that's what I'm going to read. So I'm going to choose to read the middle set of numbers because um, the 15 volt is the middle uh, line here. So I'm going to plug this in here. And when I do, I can see that I have, reading the middle set of numbers, it's a little bit past the 5 and before the 7.5. And I can even use these little small hashes to help me out. And I can see that I've got just under 6 volts of charge um, coming from the battery. We can do the same thing, trying it on a smaller battery. Um, and you'll see that we're going to have to use a different scale. So again... I'm going to do this backwards just to show you what might happen if you were to do it wrong. If you were to put the red on your negative and the black on your positive and you were to put it on here, you'll see that the needle actually goes backwards because the direction that the current is flowing matters for whether or not the meter can work. So we're going to switch this back out and put it properly with red on positive and black on negative. And when we do, this should be about one and a half volts. Let's see if this battery is charged. And it looks like it's just under. Now, I'm reading the top line, which says 1.5 here, so I'm looking at more like 1.4 on the voltmeter, um, because I'm plugged into the three volt spot. So I'm gonna read the top line, which ends in three. This does not seem too complicated. Um, because these are directly in order, 3, 15, 300, 3, 15, 300. When we switch to the ammeter, which is measuring current as opposed to voltage, it gets a slightly more complicated, but it's the same general principle. So when we look here, we see that the negative is marked here. So I check, I've got my negative side of the battery, and I clip this on down here. Now I'm going to see how um, much current is coming out of my battery and running into my ammeter. So I'm going to start by touching the 50 and I go flying off the screen. Um, the 50 here 
is where it ends in 50 over here. And this is measured in milliamps. Um, just a second. As always, the light's going out. <laughs> Um, so, uh, 50 milliamps is definitely, it's, there's way more current than 50 milliamps. So instead of 50 milliamps, let's try 500 milliamps, which means that I'd be reading the top line on the ammeter. And I don't seem to be getting much of a reading at all. So it's probably somewhere, wait, that can't be right. We're going to have to edit this. I don't know what happened. 